Hello, hello, class. So uh, it's Mr. B here, and we're back, and we're this is a screen recording where I'm going to be discussing a little bit about Autodesk Tinkercad. So I know that we used Autodesk Tinkercad previously in our PEG for the um, for the PEG games that we were creating, but I did not give you too, too much instruction. And we also, I know, did in the past our mug project where I had you guys practice creating a mug on Tinkercad, um, again, without too, too much direction. So today I'm going to go through a couple of things on Tinkercad, which hopefully are going to help you out. Keep in mind, Tinkercad is not our endpoint for computer-aided drafting. This is simply our jumping off or starting off point, right? This is, like I mentioned, the Legos, so to speak, of uh, computer-aided drafting. So let's take a look at this, right? This is our homepage. Once you log in, you're going to have a homepage similar to this here. Now, I have hundreds of designs here that I've done previously in the past um, for different projects and for my side biz and all that stuff. Um, but on the left here, you can see that we have, you might have one or two here in the center. But on the left, you can see we have 3D designs, which is where we are at right now. You can see circuits, code blocks, and then the last one is lessons. Now, some of you previously went through a few of these different lessons. I believe I gave you a day in class in order to mess around with that. Um, the lessons can be helpful and they can be useful, but uh, truthfully, as far as Tinkercad goes, I think you're better off learning by doing and learning by experimenting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead in and create new design. When I click that, it's going to load up my work plane. It's going to be a brand new blank uh, canvas for you, a blank what's called a work plane. And you can see we have a nice little blue grid pattern here on ours. Uh, there's a couple of things we're going to mention. The very first thing I'm going to mention is this grid right here. So where it says edit grid. Where it says edit grid, this has to do with uh, a couple of different things. But the main thing is changing our units. Most of you aren't super familiar with using millimeters and metric, so we are going to swap over to inches, something in the customary system we're a lot more familiar with. We are going to not adjust any of these presets right here, but you can adjust it for different 3D printers that have different size build platforms. So we're going to go ahead, change it to inches, and update our grid. It's going to make stuff make a lot more sense, right? I'm sure you understand a lot better what uh, what five inches is as opposed to let's just randomly say 65 millimeters, right? So on the left side here, we have a couple different buttons. We have a zoom in and a zoom out. We have a different viewpoint button. You can change the perspective. I prefer uh, this kind of view right here, uh, or I guess isometric view. Uh, we can do a couple other things as well. This is our view cube. You can uh, click that view cube and drag it around in any location that you would like. Now, there's a lot of shortcuts for uh, Tinkercad that I'll actually send out in, uh, in a document for you to look at uh, that can make stuff a lot easier when working in Tinkercad here. So like right now, I'm right clicking and using my mouse pad in order to adjust instead of clicking on uh, the view there. So let's go ahead and let's bring in a shape. I'm just going to, for the sake of ease, bring in a box. Now I literally click that box and drag it in. You want to take some time later on to explore some of these different options in your shape library, but today we're just going to look at the basic shapes. I have a block right now, and you can see right now I have a block. If I click on one of these corners, it'll tell me that this block is one inch by one inch. And if I click on this top arrow, you can see that it's also one inch. Now, these boxes here help you change the size of the object. I can click this box, and I can adjust this to any size I want. And if I hit the Shift key while I'm adjusting it, it's, or hold the Shift key while I'm adjusting it, it will adjust uh it will all adjust accordingly. It will scale accordingly to itself. So everything will scale with itself. Now you can see I adjusted it. And now instead of having a one inch by one inch by one inch box, I have a two and five eighths by two and five eighths by two and five eighths. But let's adjust this. I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key and bring it back down. And we're going to adjust this to, let's say, uh, um, let's make it a two inch box. I can also easily adjust this on the side so I can simply click or click or go up here and click and change the height. So let's say I want the height to be two point, oh, 
say I want the height to be 2.5, I can very easily click that and it go ahead and it goes ahead and changes the height for me. So you can see I have this nice red box right here. I can also click here and it's going to bring up a couple of different uh, pieces of information. I can do stuff like round some of the corners uh, and make it kind of a, ra a rounded box or make it almost a full circle. And I can also adjust stuff like the length, width, and height from here. The other thing we can do in here is change it, uh, change the color of it. So let's say I want a pretty pink box. There we go. You got a nice little uh, pink cube thing right there. Or we can change it to a hole. No, I will explain why that's important in just one second. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and let's drag out another shape. So in this case, let's drag out a cylinder. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the height of this cylinder. And I'm going to adjust the height of this cylinder, let's say, to three inches. When I adjust it to three inches, and we'll know that that's a little bit taller than the box that we have. The other thing I'm going to do, and it might be a little difficult to see here, but this gets a little bit choppy. So you can see that box isn't perfectly, uh, or I'm sorry, that cylinder isn't perfectly round. And I'm going to make it more round by adjusting the side count. So when I click on the cylinder, you can see we have a side count here. If I take that and drag it all the way up, we have this nice round cylinder. That's just one of the quirks in Tinkercad. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the cylinder. And I've decided that I want to cut a hole in... Um, in this box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it from a solid to a hole. When I click hole, you'll see that we have this kind of ghostly looking like figure here. I am going to drag it somewhere into that cylinder, or I'm sorry, into that box there. I'll drag the cylinder in. And it looks like it might be one, uh, one solid object, but it isn't quite yet. In order to combine those two and put a hole all the way through, we have to do what's called grouping them. So in order to group them, I can either click one and shift, hold the shift key down and click the other to select both of them. Or what I like to do is simply just click and drag a box and that will select both of them. You'll notice when we select both of these, there are a few things in this top right hand corner that light up that weren't lit up before. One of those you can see right here is a conjoined circle and square and that's our group button. So if I click that group button, it's going to do its Tinkercad magic, and it's going to cut out that hole. So now you can see that we have this hole cut out of our uh, out of our box. But we'll notice that this is not perfectly centered in there. So I want to make sure that it is perfectly centered into that cube. So I am going to first ungroup, right? That's the button right next to group. It's going to take those two objects, and it's going to separate them. And what I'm going to do is re-highlight them. And we'll see that there's a brand new light uh, thing lit up. And that's our align tool. So I'll click that align tool. And we have a bunch of different buttons that are going to allow us, oops, allow us to do a bunch of different things. But my main goal is to make sure that this is perfectly centered. So in order to do so, all I need to do is hit this center button and this center button. Now, if I want to center it in the cube as well, I can hit this button and then you can see that it's centered that way as well. Now, whenever I go and I highlight it and I group it together, we have a perfectly grouped object. There's some other tools that you can mess around with, stuff like the duplicate tool, which creates a perfect copy of your object. You can mess around with the back arrow, which is going to obviously go back on whatever you're doing, undo, 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 or you can always use the redo, redo, redo button, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to continue messing around with Tinkercad and familiarize yourself with it a little bit more. The other thing you can do is make sure you adjust the title to whatever it is. I'll just name this practice. And the last thing that we're going to do, I'll show you is adjusting the, um, is a, is adjusting the grid here. So I can adjust this over on the side. And, uh, and in this, I can adjust how far I move with each keystroke. So if I click this cylinder, every single time I click 
my left key or my right key or my up key or my down key, it is going to move one eighth of an inch. If I click that and I adjust it to one thirty second, it will move one thirty second of an inch each time I click it. It's just another little convenient fact uh, for you to use. So that's all for this video. I'll give you some time as well in class to mess around. Uh, but Tinkercad is a really, really great jumping off point for our CAD unit. All right. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you.